I wanna show you how to hire A players. I've had four companies where I've had to hire over 75 people across the different sectors and different industries, and I've made mistakes, and I've had really home runs in terms of team members and employees. I wanna show you what really works. Let's get started. Number one is getting absolute clarity on what you want this person to do. Let's give an example. Let's say I'm hiring Mike. I'm hiring Mike for one of my companies. I need a director of marketing, okay? So now I'm very clear. He's a director of marketing. Why is that important? Because the caliber of the person I'm looking for is a little bit higher than just a marketing assistant, a marketing intern. So knowing Mike is gonna be a director of marketing, great. Then I wanna know what are the roles, the responsibilities, and his scorecard. For this particular example, let's go through it. Director of marketing, the role is to be in charge of all organic and paid marketing for the company. Let's just call it a, a medical clinic. It's a medical clinic for plastic surgery and what they're doing is bringing in leads for people to do aesthetic procedures. So liposuction, nose jobs, which is called rhinoplasty and things like that. Uh, Botox. So that's the clinic. They're looking to increase their leads because this is a cash-based clinic and they're attracting people from the outside. So they need to do organic and paid marketing. Number two, they need to create lead generation. Number three, they need to create thought leadership in the space. They need to help the doctor establish some thought leadership. Number four, they need to have a reliable marketing slash eventually feed the sales team sales process with KPIs, meaning it's data driven. So now that's sort of the scorecard of the top things. And what I mean by scorecard is now we have to be going to specifics. I want them to have a total of 500 leads a month. So that's 500 leads a month. Maybe that's going to be 350 paid and 150 organic. I want at least three blog posts and thought leadership. I want three YouTube videos and I want three TikTok videos on different topics of liposuction, rhinoplasties, and Botox. Then I want them to show me the ROAS, return on average spend to be greater than three. I'm sorry, return on advertising spend, that's what ROAS means, greater than three. So that's the metric where I know that if for every $1 I put in to marketing, I'm getting $3 back. So it's very specific. Number three, I wanna use the best tools in hiring. So that is Indeed. Number two is using the WHO method for hiring. Number three is the DISC score. Let me get it down into the details for you. I've done all the different job hosting platforms. I've used recruiters, I've used uh, ladders, I've used um, a zip recruiter. None of it is as effective as Indeed. So you wanna put a very detailed post. So do research, number one, on other people looking for marketing directors in your industry. Get a couple of those ads, print them out, and basically compile the best of the best that you like, and then create a conglomerate, sort of a summary, a job posting. The number two is the who method for hiring. So as you can see here, I use this book quite often. There's all the stickies here. This is by Jeff Smart and Randy Street. This is the number one book for hiring. It has saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars of bad hires and has helped me create multiple seven and eight figure companies. So highly recommend this. Read the book and then do the levels of interviews that they talk about. There's probably three levels of interviews. There's an intro level of interview, then you do a in-depth interview, then you do a reference interview. The most powerful question you can ask in the reference interview, and I'll be very clear that you wanna write this down. Would you enthusiastically rehire this person? So if I talk to Mike's previous boss, let's say he worked at another clinic that was doing, it was a, it was a cardiology clinic. Hey previous employer, would you enthusiastically rehire Mike? If I heard a pause, uh, mm, um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I would probably say, hey, that's a red flag. But if they say, oh yeah, Mike was phenomenal. He, he just had to move because of family. I bring him back in two seconds. The book goes through a lot more detail than we have time for in this video. So go through the book, but it really explains to you how your gut and your instinct is usually wrong in hiring. And just because they speak well, doesn't make sense. And the last piece of thing I wanna talk about is on the main interview that you do as the owner, you wanna make it a two hour interview. People can BS for 15 minutes, people BS for 30 minutes, some really good BSers can do it for an hour, but it's hard to fake it for two hours. I grill and I go through things in detail on my interviews and so I know who they are by the end of it and there's no way around it. I know the 
the, the inside of them, they're very fiber and DNA. And so that's why I feel very comfortable. And the last one is your disc score. Disc score stands for D-I-S-C. D stands for driver or decision maker or sort of dominant. I stands for like, likes to, is an influencer and is very connected and likes to talk to people and more extroverted and is more customer oriented. S stands for steady, fast and conscientiousness. They're really thinking about everything. They're trying to keep everything stable. C stands for conscientiousness. They're very detail oriented. So the SCs usually go together. The Ds and the Is are separate too. Depending on this role, I want someone who's probably in either a D or an I. They need one of these two because I want them to be a people person and I want them to really drive the business forward. But I also need a little bit of the S see the steady fastness and the conscientiousness because I want them to hit their KPIs. I want them to be data oriented. Otherwise they're going to fall through the cracks and they're not going to be able to hit their goals. And finally, number four is onboarding. You really want to have a at least 30 or 60 day onboarding process where you're easing them into the organization. They know very clearly all the duties and responsibilities and you slowly add them on. You get feedback, making sure they feel comfortable and they're like much more likely to be successful if you ease them into the process versus you throw them into the fire. There's a bonus. Let me give you this bonus. The bonus is this. If you're willing to pay 10, 15, even 20% more than your competitors, these people will be so loyal to you that they'll produce about 100 to 200% more work. So by you hiring an A player at a premium salary, you're probably paying 20% more, but you're getting 200% more outcomes or output. You get what you pay for. So I've tended to start to pay higher salaries and bring in the best and let them earn their salaries. Remember, just because I pay them more doesn't mean I have to keep them. I can always let them go. So this is the strategy if you want to bring on A players in your organization.